Hi everybody, Big Red here, and I have another Bell Lost Souls video overview. Today we are looking at the North Africa book from Flames of War, and this is uh, this book came out late last year, but uh, it is one of the uh, of the two hardcover, big, massive kind of tome books for mid war, and it is a uh, it is a really really nice uh, nice book. Let's take a look at it. Uh, first things first, this book has a price of fifty dollars, which is a really good deal for what you get. Um, this is hardcover. We have, we're looking at a book that is uh, 265 pages full color. As you can tell, this is a big, thick tome of a book. Let's take a look inside and see what we have. Uh, first things first is right on the front of it, we have, um, as you can tell, um, North Africa. This is the Mediterranean Theater, 1942 to 1943. Uh, here's the kind of map of Europe right here. And one of the things that Battlefront and Flames of War does that is different from a lot of the other systems is their books aren't broken down by particular country or faction, they break their books down by theater. So, for instance, you wouldn't go out and buy a book about the Germans. You would buy a book instead about, in this case, North Africa, and it'll contain all of the forces that fought in that area. So, as an example, if you have a, a group of gamers, how you do it with uh, with Flames of War is you say, hey, why don't we, we want to play, we're interested in this time period of the war and this theater, and then you guys can all get the one book, and you all have, uh, and then everyone has access to all the forces that are there, which is really nice. So there, there's not a whole lot of the, I don't know what your army does, because I didn't buy it, because I don't play it, and all that kind of issues go away. Uh, let's take a look at the table of contents here really quick. What we're looking at uh, is, uh, you, have a, you have a little 20-page section uh, right at the start of the book, uh, which is a uh, history, uh, so you get a little primer on the North African campaign, then you get uh, all of the different forces, here's here's Germany, here's Italy, here's uh, the United Kingdom, and here's the United States. And as you can tell here, each of these little things, each of these entries, this is an army list, so one of the things that's uh, very different from uh, uh, In Flames of War from a lot of the other systems is you just get huge amounts of army lists, so it's not so much um, that that you get this kind of a small set of units, then you mix and match them however, however you want. Within each, each, each nation, there's a huge amount of variety. And then even within those lists, you oftentimes get sub-lists based on, uh, on uh, different, different quality levels of the army. And we'll get to that in a little bit. So let's go ahead and take a look here. So we're kind of walking you quickly through, the, uh, through the, the 20 pages of intro. This is basic definitions, how you read the army lists. Um, here's the history of the war. You get all the beautiful maps. Um, you get some little basics, uh, term, terminology, so you can kind of understand what a lot of the words mean. What, you know, what is a pioneer company? Well, that tells you. You know, in the German army, a pioneer company is, you know, blah, 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 blah. And there it is. And all the, the kind of the interesting words that you may not be used to in, in the United States, uh, Italy, Britain. Uh, you get some special rules in here. You get some nice color plates with uh, all of the uh, the game being played. Beautifully painted desert, desert-themed miniatures. Uh, in uh, uh, warriors, which is kind of a special characters, basically, who are individuals who, who get special rules. They're all in here, and all the different armies have those. And um, I'll kind of skip through Germany, because we've talked about Germany. But as you can see, Germany, for, for, for an example, has 15 different army lists in it, ranging from their tank companies to, to, um, to um, uh, mechanized infantry. You get their divisional support, just all kinds of stuff. And as you can tell here, it just goes on and on and on. Uh, after Germany... Get some more beautiful sections. Uh, we go on to Italy. So you get a little color plate section here. Italy, you get their army list. Italy has about seven army lists. And as you can tell, I'll just go quickly through those. We're, we're, we're going to stop and take a more detailed look when we get to, uh, to England. So let's take a look at England. Here we go. So here's some of their warriors with their special rules. And here's one of the really neat things about England is that I told you that uh, some... Even within army lists, you get you you can get differences in quality level based on kind of uh, the you know where where some of the of the regional differences. So in the German army, there might be the regular army versus versus um, um, the more veteran part, parts of it, like uh, um, like the paratroopers, as an example. In the uh, in the British section, you get almost five for one. So what you end up here with is, as you can see on this chart, is you. Not uh, each of those army lists. In, in in addition to choosing which British army list you want, you get to choose what part of the empire it came from. So you have Canada, the United Kingdom, India, South Africa, Australia, and New Zealand. And each of those, um, each of those subparts of the empire gives you slightly special rules, and 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 point adjustments, which is really neat. Um, so let's take a look at a sample army list for for 
England. Here is a rifle company. And what you have here is, we'll kind of show you, uh, this is the basic definition of the army list over here. So you get, in here, you get, uh, in black, these are your mandatory units that you must take. So in the case of a rifle company, you have to have a headquarters, and then you have to have three infantry pl platoons. Then these are all the optional things you, you can have. So these are your weapon platoons, and, and it'll tell you the, how many you can have and if there's ratios. These are your support platoons. These are divisional support, so these are kind of the big, the big rarer pieces of equipment, heavy tanks, large artillery pieces, aircraft, that you can have small amounts of added to your army. And then each of these boxes translates over to one of these. So as an example, here is the infantry company, which is right here. And that infantry company, uh, infantry platoon, is right here, the, the rifle platoon. And you, you can see uh, right here that this thing consists of a command rifle headquarters team and um, up to six stands of infantry. And you pay based on, on uh, well, up to uh, uh, two or three of those squads. And not only do you get options there, and then this will list all of the various options, but then over here you'll see that there's these five boxes here. And this tells you these are the modified point costs based on whether you want them to be um, uh, in uh, Eighth Army, Australians, Indians, New Zealanders, South Africans. So you can see there's a huge amount of variety that you can do. And when you and there's and there and there's miniatures available uh, uh, for lots of these things too. So there are um, you can get Gurkhas who have you know a very distinctive kind of look to them than than some of the of of the other uh, um, forces. And uh, and this just goes on and on. So you know that was just this. So let's take take a look at this particular army list. And then you have weapons platoons, mortars, anti-aircraft platoons, brigade support, heavy mortars, uh, mine flail platoons, transport sections to carry body around. And you can still see here all the differences between the different parts of the Commonwealth. Uh, and that was just one. And uh, as you can see. Uh, uh, the United Kingdom has about 15 different army lists in this book. Uh, towards, we'll skip past them. Towards the end of it, we move into Stars and Stripes, in the good old United States. And they have seven army lists. You get all their color plates, their warriors, and uh, you, you know tank companies, rifled platoons, uh, mechanized rifle platoons, their divisional support, you know, P-40s, and our, uh, uh, larger artillery pieces. And that... Um, let me t do uh, one little quick talk about this, which is uh, each of the nations at the end of it has an arsenal. And this is the, the listing for that particular nation of all of the different types of units that, um, you know, as a whole. And one of the big differences that you see in Flames of War compared to a lot of other game systems is just a tremendous amount of units. Now, obviously, any particular army list doesn't have access to, to all of them, but one of the big things that you, that uh, that is... Uh, a big, a big change for people who are used to other systems is just the huge number and and the size of the miniatures range. So here's an example of just the United States, which, you know, having seven ar army lists, this is a smaller range, not as large as the United Kingdom or as Germany. And here's th the different types of tanks that the United States can have. And here they all are. Just an entire page of them. The different types of guns, transport teams, different types of infantry teams, aircraft, um, you know, Germany has about double that, you know, as an example. So just huge. Special rules, and then you get the, the very, very end of the book, you get a couple pages of painting guides, uh, where they give you some nice little pictures, and then give you uh, recommendations of which paints to actually use for all the basic things for all the nations. That takes you to the end of the book. Once again, that is North Africa. That's just an amazing piece of work, and uh, that is available now. Talk to you guys later.